be with you. Today is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. It's also kickoff Sunday, meaning it's the beginning of another year of Sunday school and the start of our program year. And there's still time for you at home to come and join us for the church picnic out in the backyard, if you so choose. Our Zoom Bible study on the weekly scripture readings for each Sunday will begin this Wednesday online at 1 p.m. Links will be available each week and reflections will also be sent on that day. Hope you can join us for that. This Saturday is a Habitat Build up in Waukegan. All the details you need to know about that are in Connections. You must be 16 years and up to participate. And next Sunday, our adult Sunday School class will begin at 10.30, right after the worship service. We're going to begin a study of a video series entitled, How We Got the New Testament. I think you'll find it very informative. Now let's worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that pursuing what you have promised, we may share your heavenly glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
first reading is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from the third chapter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more salt water can yield fresh. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world 
and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many of us have questions that we would like to ask Jesus. Why must innocent children suffer? When are you coming again? How do you decide when and how you will answer our prayers? Why is it that some people believe and others don't? Do you still work miracles? What's heaven like? And what's the purpose of mosquitoes, anyhow? I'm sure you can come up with questions of your own. Jesus has some questions for us as well. In today's gospel, Jesus asks his disciples two questions. The first one is pretty easy. Jesus asks, who do people say that I am? Jesus wants to know the word that's on the street, what people are saying about him when he's not around. Now, this is a straightforward, non-threatening question for the disciples. They simply report what they have heard other people say about Jesus. Then Jesus raises the ante significantly by asking a much more profound question. But who do you say that I am? Now, I picture a long silence before Peter finally speaks up saying, Jesus, you are the Messiah. To tell Jesus who you believe him to be is, is something momentous. It puts you on record. It's not just a bit of information or even an opinion. It's a statement of faith. And so the answer you give says as much about you as it does about Jesus. Now, unlike Peter and those other disciples, you and I have had the benefit of 2,000 years of hindsight to help us form an answer to this question. Nevertheless, the question still stands. So what would you say if Jesus asked you, who do you say that I am? There are many possible answers, good and worthy answers, yet which answer expresses who Jesus is for you? If you say that Jesus is your Savior, then you need to come to terms with your own need for being saved. From just what is it that Jesus saves you? What does it mean to admit that you are a sinner in thought, word, and deed? And likewise, it means accepting our helplessness in the face of death. So to have a Savior requires you to be both humble and repentant. If you say that Jesus is Lord, then by all means you must listen and obey. A Lord is not someone you can just blithely ignore. The authority of your Lord is to be honored and respected. To have a Lord, one must learn to be obedient. If you say that Jesus is a teacher, you must realize that you are ignorant and must then be willing to learn. So when was the last time you participated in any kind of study? One of my regrets as a pastor over all these years is how few adults I have managed to engage in adult learning. If Jesus is the word of God, you need to listen and to learn from him. If you say that Jesus is the way, then it means you cannot have things your own way. Jesus says that following him involves denying yourself, not something that many of us are inclined to do. And so then, I did it my way cannot be your theme song. If you say that Jesus is the truth, you must own up to all that is less than true in yourself. You need to conduct a rigorous self-inventory to identify all that is false in you, all the half-truths, all the white lies that we tell ourselves. You need to address the things about you that are too true to be good. If you say that Jesus is your friend, like it says in that well-known hymn, you need to consider what kind of a friend you are to Jesus. Because friendship is a two-way proposition. It's clear how Jesus has befriended you, all that he has done for you. What are you doing to be a friend to Jesus and to all the other ones whom Jesus calls friends? If you say that Jesus is the light of the world, you need to reckon with the ways that you still linger in darkness, hiding your secret self from view. 
Jesus can't be light for you if there are things about you that you would prefer to keep in the shadows. You need to find courage to walk in the light. If you say that Jesus is the true vine, then you need to be serious about what you are doing to stay connected to the vine and how you are abiding in Christ. How do you stay in touch with Jesus? And what kind of fruit are you producing as a branch on that vine? If you say that Jesus is the bread of life, then why do you settle for so much junk food instead of genuine spiritual content? The bread of life is offered every time we gather together for worship. Why would you skip any meals? If you say that Jesus is your good shepherd, then you need to acknowledge your limitations as a sheep in his flock. Sheep get lost. Sheep don't know what's best for them. Sheep are vulnerable. So when Jesus is your shepherd, you need to follow him as close as you can. If you say that Jesus is the resurrection, then there is no reason for fear of death or really for fearing anything else. If you are confident that Jesus will raise you to eternal life, you can afford to be bold to take risks for the sake of the gospel. If you say that Jesus is life, then you have to ask, what is keeping you from a full and abundant life? What is it that causes you to hang back? And what must you be doing to enter into a more vibrant life in Christ? Well, it's not hard to see why 11 out of the 12 did not speak up when Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? For to answer that question is to reveal a whole lot about yourself. And it's also to commit yourself. So it's safer to keep quiet and let someone else do the talking. Yet, of course, to give no reply to the question that Jesus poses also reveals a lot about who we are. Perhaps we're too proud to admit our real needs, or too busy or distracted to focus on what matters most, or too anxious about giving the right answer. Jesus is waiting and hoping for an answer. And the truth is, no one else can answer this question for you. And even if you never speak the words, the way you live day by day will speak volumes about who Jesus is for you. Jesus actually knows what's in your heart. Do you? Amen. and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. 
Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church, that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Help those who suffer, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forming God, you gather this community together. Shape our communal life that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for fellow members, Mike and Carol Bennett, Richard and Susan Homer, and Gerald and Barbara Schultz. We thank you for them and we ask your blessing on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to follow Christ, make disciples, and live the gospel. Thanks be to God.